I'd like to thank you guys for joining the AFC podcast. We're getting ready to talk about these two jerk offs right here that are on my screen. They have done something that for us, we know that this is a very common thing for people to abuse children. And we're going to continue to call out these criminals and hope that they get their just due in court. But a Reno couple has pleaded guilty. So for the people that heard this earlier, um, when it first started, now we are having a culmination of here is where we are. They have pleaded guilty to murder charges in the torturous death of the man's five-year-old daughter who police say was handcuffed in an animal cage and starved before she died. And then they stashed her emaciated body in a duffel bag and that duffel bag was found in a California storage unit. I know you guys are just like, are you kidding me, Jay? No, I'm not kidding you. And I always want to remind you guys, I know it's difficult for a lot of people to be here because these stories get heart wrenching, but I always tell you guys, there's nothing more heart wrenching than what these children actually have to go through. The least we could do in my opinion is at least hear their story so we can know what went on with them. And maybe we can start implementing things that can prevent this going forward. One of those things I believe in, do not put your hands, feet or other objects on children. I don't believe in beating, spanking, hitting, being physical with children at all. Okay. That's one of the biggest things that I've been talking about the past two years, right? But we continue to keep seeing examples and I continue to show you guys examples of what's going on with these children. So the least I want people to do is open their mind and open their heart. And I want you guys to hear this little baby's story who could not speak for herself, nor could she defend herself against the tyranny of her own caretakers. And shout out to my brother, Relationship Rehab, and Tommy, by the way. But shout out to you brothers, man. Really appreciate you guys. The mother's name, let me get her face up on the screen. On the far right hand side, her name is Avriana Enoch Anderson. Let me spell this ghetto ass name for you guys who are ghetto name challenged. All right. Avery, A-V-E-R-Y. So I'm assuming maybe that comes from her biological father's side. I don't know. Avery, Anna, A-U-N-A, -A, Enoch, E-N-O-C-H, Anderson, spelled traditionally. She is 25 years old. She looking like a man. I can't lie. She looking like a man. <laughs> like Miss Swan would say, right? She truly does. I thought this was two guys. I'm like, what did these two men do to this four-year-old little girl? No, actually one of them is a female, even though it's hard to discern what is a female in the black community, as we all know. But Avriana pleaded guilty to first degree murder and the biological father in the middle that jackass right there, his name is Tyler Anderson, and he is 25 years old right there on this side right here. And again, shout out to Elissa Deeds for that, uh, for that thumbnail right there. He pleaded guilty to second degree murder Thursday in a Washoe County District Court. The two 25 year olds also pleaded guilty to destruction of evidence and are expected to be sentenced to life in prison with the possibility of parole at their sentencing that is set for April the 21st of this year. Did everybody catch that? Life in prison with the possibility of parole. But again, I want you guys to understand what this little girl went through. So let me tell you a little bit more about her story, okay? Reno police discovered the couple had three children in total. The two boys are the couple's biological children but baby Callie, the five-year-old girl who was murdered, was not Avriana's biological daughter, but went by the name Anderson before the couple divorced in August. Did willfully and unlawfully kill Callie Anderson, the five-year-old little girl that you'll see in the photos coming up, by means of torture, court documents say. <sighs> Avriana intentionally withheld food and water from the girl for purposes of inflicting pain by means of starvation for revenge or sadistic purpose of hatred of Callie Anderson due to the fact that Callie 
was not her biological child, according to court documents filed. I want to jog your memory. How many times, guys, have we done stories? Was my last story not about a starvation case? Was the last story before that not about a starvation case? How many stories have I done about these people starving children? The very essential thing that these children need and they starve them. It's the worst kind of shit you can do to a human being. Let's keep going. <sighs> Avriana, and I hate that name. Avriana was the biological mother of two of the children fathered by Tyler Anderson, who were living with the couple in Reno at the time. Avriana and Tyler reversed earlier not guilty pleas as part of a plea bargain agreement that called for each to serve a year in jail for destruction of evidence before the life murder sentence begins. Okay. Hopefully you guys stick with me on that. Prosecutors agreed to recommend Avriana to be eligible for parole after 20 years, meaning she will be 45. That woman will be 45 by the time she is eligible for parole. And Tyler Anderson, the father right here, will be eligible after 10 years on the murder charges because he pleaded second degree, according to the plea deal. Both were originally charged with murder following their arrest after May in 2018, days after the girl's body was found in a storage unit in Sacramento, California. Did y'all hear what I just said? They starved this little girl, beat this little girl, and placed her in a cage, and she was handcuffed. Lord knows how long this was going on, right? Most of her life, she spent in a freaking cage, handcuffed and starved at five years old. And you're telling me that Avriana will be eligible for parole for murder? And you mean to tell me that that asshole right there who was the biological father who that little girl depended on to protect her and provide for her, he only gets 10 years. I don't, I don't, I really don't understand how this is supposed to work. Let's move on with the story. Both were originally charged with murder, but they found the little girl's body in a storage room. So they put that little baby right there that you see on my screen and stuffed her starved out body in a duffel bag, bagged her up and took her in a storage room and just left her dead body in a storage room. They initially faced an additional charge of child abuse causing substantial bodily harm, but that charge was dropped. Why? I don't know. Investigators believe the girl was dead for a week in the couple's unkept Reno apartment. And keep in mind, I said unkept apartment before they placed her inside a bag and a plastic drum. They rented a truck and left the body in a storage facility owned by a friend who later became suspicious and called the police because this person saw something and said something. Otherwise, this might have went under the radar. So shout out to that person. Detectives who searched the couple's apartment found a wire animal cage with handcuffs attached and a backpack next to the crate with a hat inside bearing the girl's name. If that doesn't bother you guys, I, I don't know what's going on inside this part of your body right there. I really don't. The mother on the right hand side, Avriana Anderson, told police that the girl was suffering from health problems. So she lied on this baby. She said around May 4th of 2018, the girl was immobile and unresponsive with what appeared to be a weak pulse and shallow breathing. Avriana said that the couple took turns performing CPR 
and later placed baby Callie, who was five years old, in cold water in a shower in an attempt to wake her up. Doesn't that sound familiar? I've done a couple of stories very similar to what you just heard. They put her in a cold shower to so-called try to wake her up. Avriana estimated their life-saving efforts lasted about three hours, but they never sought emergency services. Isn't that something? Isn't that something? Hashtag, where's the biological mom in this? Very good question. Thank you, Ms. Mina. Where is the biological mom in this situation? And again, if you guys are watching, we have a challenge going right now for a donation challenge. If you guys will, please click that thumbs up. That's what we want you guys to put your efforts in. Make sure you click that thumbs up. It will help our algorithm for our channel and bring in more people to watch us while we're live, okay? We'll only be live for a little while, so just click that thumbs up. For every thumbs up that we get, Mom's Fur Baby said that she was going to donate one dollar for every thumbs up so you guys make sure and show some support for that okay because mom's fur babies not only is she dealing with the stuff that she's dealing with but she is an amazing friend and an amazing supporter and i truly appreciate her and i truly appreciate everybody who jumps on board and supports and if anybody wants to help support that then by all means just let us know in the chat okay let's talk a little bit more about the story before we show you the news videos when they realized that she was dead they changed her clothes and placed her into a duffel bag where it remained for an entire week before the father, that jackass right there, Tyler Anderson then drove the U-Haul and she followed in her vehicle to Sacramento, she told the police. Tyler Anderson, the biological father right there, caused his daughter to suffer in justifiable pain and mental suffering as a result of, neg of neglect and endangerment. I almost said negligent, but neglect and endangerment, said in a plea memorandum filed Thursday. The mother, Avriana, and the father, Tyler, were both responsible for her care and shared responsibility for the neglect, it said. This neglect and endangerment was inherently, inherently dangerous because the death to a child was foreseeable, a foreseeable consequence and did in fact cause the victim's death due to complications from undernourishment and malnourishment, the plea agreement said. They starved this baby out and killed her and probably beat the shit out of her and Lord knows what else probably happened. But let me go ahead and give you guys the fair usage and let you guys take a look at the news video. Some of these are gonna be a mix of old ones and new ones, but let me let y'all hear from the news. Federal law allows citizens to reproduce, distribute, or exhibit portions of copyrighted motion pictures, videotapes, or video discs under certain circumstances without the authorization of the copyright holder. This is called fair use. It is allowed for purposes of criticism, news reporting, teaching, and parody, which doesn't infringe of copyright under 17 U.S.C. 107. Once again, guys, if y'all would, do me a favor and let me know what y'all think. And, let, and if y'all have any names that y'all want to call these people, post it. I don't care what you call them. Post it in the chat, man. Speak your mind. Speak from your heart. And again, you guys hit that thumbs up and click that thumbs up and smash that thumbs up and make that thumbs up blue. Let's get it. Tyler Anderson making his first court appearance nearly one week. After and I forgot about that. Thank you, Alyssa Deeds. They also had two other children that were younger that witnessed this. Two other children. Tyler Anderson making his first court appearance nearly one week after his five-year-old daughter Callie was found inside a Sacramento U-Haul storage container. The 23-year-old's father speaking briefly outside court. I love him. What about, about your granddaughter? I love her. In court documents, inside the duffel bag were the decomposing remains of a small child. The five-year-old's death believed to take place more than two weeks ago inside the Reno apartment the 23-year-old shared with his wife, Avriana Anderson, the stepmom of Callie, now in Washoe County custody in connection to the girl's death. Police believe the child had been severely neglected prior to her death. I want y'all to make sure y'all hear what they just said. I'm going to back it up a little bit. Let me give a quick shout out real quick on the chat. Papa Cap says, thank you for standing up for these kids and exposing evil where it stands. Well said, Papa Cap. And thank you so much for showing support for the AFC and really what we stand for. We advocate for children first. Thank you so much for your donation. 
two-year-old shared with his wife, Avriana Anderson. The stepmom of Callie, now in Washoe County custody in connection to the girl's death. Police believe the child had been severely neglected prior to her death, describing an apartment in disarray with spoiling food, stains, and dirty clothing, as well as a wire animal crate in the bathroom with handcuffs attached to it adding there did not appear to be a pet living in the residence. Rather, a girl's backpack with girl's clothing next to the crate. Once dead, the couple is accused of placing Callie's body into the bedroom closet, where the five-year-old remained for approximately seven days. Before taking her body to a friend's U-Haul facility in Sacramento, that friend is the one to notify police, leading to the Andersons' arrest. As for what Callie's grandfather thinks what happened. It's an accident. That's all I can figure. What? 23 year olds Tyler and Avery a unit. I hope y'all heard that. He said he thinks it's an accident. Seriously, bro? Nothing about this was an accident. Listen to what he said there at the end. He said that really quick before the next video played. I'm going to play it one more time. Anderson's arrest. As for what Callie's grandfather thinks what happened. It's an accident. That's all I can an accident if you just heard what they were accused of there's no way that this was an accident that's a dumbass thing to say 23 year olds tyler and avery ayuna anderson are locked up and in jail after investigators accuse them of renting a vehicle and driving the dead five-year-old's body more than 100 miles from their home in reno nevada to a Sacramento storage facility. On Tuesday, officers responded and found the girl's body inside a unit. David Hartman manages the Glen Rose Avenue U-Haul facility. It's a, it's a tragedy that this has occurred. It's a, we're cooperating with law enforcement 100%. Detectives believe the five-year-old died within the last two weeks here at the couple's Reno apartment. They say the child had been severely neglected prior to her death. In Sacramento, neighbors say officers have been working out here for three days and are stunned to find out why. We got a storage unit there, so we couldn't even get in there. But I didn't think it'd be a little kid, <laughs> that's for sure. Officers arrested Tyler Anderson, the girl's biological father, the next day in Sacramento. Reno officers arrested Avery Ayuna Anderson, the girl's stepmother. He said Avery Ayuna. He can't even pronounce her name right, and I don't blame him. He said, listen to it again, Avery Aaron. Sure. Officers arrested Tyler Anderson, the girl's biological father, the next day in Sacramento. Her name is Avriana. Listen to how he pronounces this. Listen again. Reno officers arrested Avery Ayuna Anderson, the girl's stepmother, in Nevada. A death investigation is underway after authorities found a child's body inside a Sacramento storage unit. Tonight, the How do you accidentally starve a kid, stuff their emaciated body in a duffel bag, drive 100 miles to a fucking storage room to put the kid in a storage room? What is accidental about any of that? There has to be some logic in somebody's head that says, hmm... Yeah, there's something about that there's an accident. I, I would love to hear how he thought that was an accident. Just curious. Five-year-old's father and his wife are behind bars, facing charges in connection with her death. New tonight, CBS 13's Drew Balea is live in Sacramento with the disturbing details and reaction, Drew, from neighbors as well. Yeah, just a terrible scene here. Uh, police telling us that the five-year-old girl's body was found inside a storage unit here at this U-Haul facility near El Camino Avenue, and we're told that she was severely neglected before her death. That's just sickening. Shocked and saddened. It's not human. Rebecca Markison and her husband, Adam, saw the investigation unfold. It's all about... Seven cars total of CSI and cops. The Marcusons live across the street from the U-Haul storage facility where a disturbing discovery was made. That it's a tragedy that this has occurred. It's a, uh, we're cooperating with law enforcement 100%. According to the Reno Police Department, the body of a five-year-old girl was found inside of the storage unit Wednesday morning. The girl's father, Tyler Anderson, and his wife, Avriana, have been charged with child neglect. God have mercy on your soul. Police say the girl died at the couple's Reno apartment sometime in the past two weeks. They say the couple then rented a car to move the girl's body to the Sacramento storage unit. <sighs> Sorry, it's just very disturbing. 
she's the first person I've heard so far that seemed like she got emotionally bothered. Take note of that previous video. You'll have to go back and rewind it to see that that father that had his little girl, he was holding his little girl. He didn't seem like he was that bothered. It was a dead kid in a storage room. She actually seemed like she was bothered. First person I've seen on video so far that seemed like, like, whoa, this is real effed up. It's a troubling and emotional situation for Markison, who says she lost two children due to complications during pregnancy. There's millions of people that would have loved that little girl. Wow. She said that she tried to give birth and her body disallowed it twice. And she became enraged and she almost burst out into tears right there on camera and said, there are some people out here that would love to have children. Isn't that something? And I know a lot of my ladies have it, have said that before in my chat. So, man, that's crazy. Let's let's keep going. Again, just a very, very terrible scene that was found here earlier this week. Police say that it is possible that the couple could face additional charges as this investigation continues. The person at the center of one of the more disturbing cases involving a child is now awaiting extradition back to Reno. Anytime you guys donate, I will absolutely take a pause for the cause and read it. Sheree said, these demonic demons are sacrificing their kids. These demonic demons are sacrificing their kids. And it seems like they are. They absolutely are. But again, I want you guys to remember the fact, and thank you for your uh, for your super chat there, Sheree. Really appreciate that. Keep in mind, I have another hashtag that we say over here. You guys remember what it is? Hashtag babies for benefits. How many of you guys remember that? These parents will have these children and keep these children only for the benefits that they can collect from these children. And I'm not so sure that maybe these people were probably trying to make it seem like her death was natural and collect a check called insurance or GoFundMe. What y'all think about that? What do y'all think about that? They might've even been trying to get insurance, which most people ain't got no fucking insurance on their kids. So I'm assuming they might've been trying to garner up some sympathy for a GoFundMe. Hashtag babies for benefits. If you guys ever see that hashtag anywhere, you know it came from the AFC, the Advocates for Children channel. That came from us. Hashtag when you date thugs, you date death. Thank you. Hood hoes love hood dick. That's another hashtag we have. The more y'all hang around over here, man, the more y'all will see that we got some, we got some names for these people. Hashtag BBB Big Belly Bowens out of Houston, Texas. What up, fat ass? I plan to go to Houston, Texas and see if I can see if I can see her out and about somewhere and I'm gonna absolutely make sure and let her know about herself. Got 180 thumbs up. If you guys would, please click that thumbs up. It'll share the stream. It'll bring more people in. We're almost about to wrap up. You guys are doing a great job on the thumbs up. So smash that thumbs up for me. 24 year old Tyler Anderson from Reno is accused of disposing his dead daughter's body inside a Sacramento storage unit. Anderson is being charged with child abuse and we got some other ones. Hashtag TTT. TTO. What do y'all know? Do y'all know what that stands for? For fathers and men like this, we have a hashtag called hashtag take the testicles. Snip them, cut them off, burn them, throw them away, put them at a garbage disposal. Get rid of them. He clearly doesn't need them. Men can continue to reproduce until the day that they die. And people like this father do not deserve to have reproductive rights. He deserves to be in hell and a very special place in hell for not only doing this to an innocent defenseless child, a little girl, but his own baby. Hashtag TTT. Take the testicles. For mothers like this, by the time she gets out at 45, she may or may not still be able to reproduce. Hashtag take the ovaries. She don't need to be able to reproduce. Green Eyes Reed donated in the super chat. Let me say, uh, give her a shout out, man, because she's been here for a while. Thank you so much, Green Eyes Reed. Really appreciate your donation, sweetheart. Really appreciate that. Guys, let's keep going.
Neglect. Thanks for joining us. I'm Tony Lopez. And I'm Adrian Moore. Reno police detectives say Anderson and his wife stuffed the little girl's body into a duffel bag and then hit her inside a plastic drum. CBS 13's Angela Musalam is live at the Sacramento County Jail Forest tonight with the very latest. Angela. Tony, Adrian, the details of this case are quite sickening. Greeno police say both parents knew the little girl was sick, but never called 911. Instead, police say they stuffed her inside their closet for about a week before driving her down here to Sacramento. A lack of expression on Tyler. I got one more hashtag. Can somebody post hashtag THC in the chat? THC. Hashtag THC. I'm not going to stop the video anymore. Put a hashtag in the chat. Hashtag THC has a double meaning for men and women. Hashtag THC. Take his children. Take her children. THC. How about that? That's our new hashtag. THC. Take her children. I thought about this because this dude I used to know back in the day, he told this jacked up story about him getting into a fight with this dude and he hated this dude so much that what did he do? When he finally got the dude on the ground and he was beating him up, he started kicking him in his nuts repeatedly. And somebody asked him, they said, why are you kicking him in the nuts? And you know what he said? He said, I'm taking his children. There's only one person in Oklahoma that's gonna know exactly what I'm talking about. And I'm not going to lie, I always thought the story was funny because you just got to know that the dude, the dude, the dude is a funny dude. He said, I hate him so much, I'm going to take his children and he continued to kick him in his nuts. Hashtag THC, take his children and take her children. Take their reproductive rights away. Let's keep going. Anderson's face as he stood before a judge inside this Sacramento County courtroom. Anderson is suspected of abusing and endangering his five-year-old daughter, leading to her death on May 4th. Sir, when was the last time you saw your granddaughter? A man claiming to be Anderson's father declined to answer any questions we had about Anderson or his granddaughter after the arraignment Monday afternoon. Disturbing details into the investigation from an affidavit filed by Reno police revealed the little girl had been living in deplorable conditions. Detectives say they found a wire animal crate with handcuffs in one of the bathrooms inside Anderson's home in Reno. The little girl's belongings were found next to that crate along with old food on the floor. Police say the little girl was found unresponsive by her parents on the night of May 4th. Anderson's wife told detectives she attempted CPR on the girl with Anderson's help for several hours. Police say the couple eventually put the girl in a duffel bag and stuffed her inside a plastic drum where she stayed for a week before she was driven to the Sacramento storage facility in mid-May. I don't understand what kind of person could do that. Shock and anger plagues this neighborhood just across from the storage facility where the little girl was found on Tuesday. People, I don't understand what people can do this to a child. And that's the only thing that gets me is how you can do it to a child. While neighbors question how a parent can do the unthinkable, Reno Child Protective Services tell CBS 13, we have no history of interaction or involvement. I'm sorry, guys. I have to say this. Knight Rider said hashtag NASA because usually we talk about people like this need to be enrolled in NASA so we can put them on a space shuttle and launch them into space to never come back to Earth again. That's what NASA and the rockets stand for whenever people post the rockets in the chat. But I just thought about this. <laughs> NASA can also stand for something else. Y'all know what it stands for? Also, these double entendres, niggas are stupid asses. <laughs> niggas are stupid asses. NASA. Let's keep going. Put the girl in a duffel bag and stuffed her inside a plastic drum where she stayed for a week before she was driven to the Sacramento storage facility in mid-May. I don't understand what kind of person could do that. Shock and anger plagues this neighborhood just across from the storage facility where the little girl was found on Tuesday. People, I don't understand what people can do this to a child. 
and that's the only thing that gets me is how you can do it to a child. While neighbors question how a parent can do the unthinkable, Reno Child Protective Services tell CBS 13, we have no history of interaction or involvement with this family. We have removed the surviving siblings. They are safe, and we are providing care for them at this time. And right now, Anderson is waiting extradition back to Reno. There he'll be facing child abuse charges, and a motion has been filed in Washoe County to determine whether or not Anderson is mentally competent to stand trial in connection to his daughter's death. Somebody asked what she reported missing. No idea, because you got to remember, she's five years old, so she wasn't, she was almost at the age, or she was right at the age of being able to go to pre, uh, to pre K, so I don't know. Maybe she wasn't enrolled in school yet. This morning, we have learned a five-year-old discovered dead in a Sacramento storage unit may have been kept in a dog cage in a Reno apartment before she died. I'm going to rewind that. Let me let y'all hear that again. That, that just pisses me off every time I hear it. How was the body found? Okay, P, uh, P35010. Here's the video. Listen to this one. This will tell you. This morning, we have learned a five-year-old Discovered dead in a Sacramento storage unit may have been kept in a dog cage in a Reno apartment before she died. The father and stepmother of that young girl, well, they're now both facing charges. And CBS 13's Dina Comfort joining us live from the Sacramento County Jail with more details. Dina, good morning. Good morning, Ken and Bethany. Well, the father of that little girl is behind me here at the Sacramento County Jail facing charges related to the five-year-old's death. And again, this all started in Reno and then ultimately led to Sacramento. So what we know now is that the father, Tyler Anderson, has been arrested and booked here. Her stepmom, Adriana Anderson, is in a Reno jail, both facing charges relating to her death. The five-year-old Callie's body was found on Tuesday inside of a U-Haul storage facility in Sacramento. But a Reno TV station obtained an affidavit that says police found an animal crate inside of the couple's Reno apartment bathroom. It had handcuffs attached and food nearby, but no evidence of a pet. The stepmom reportedly told police Callie was unresponsive earlier this month. They tried CPR before putting the girl in cold water and then put her into a duffel bag. The child's body was kept in a closet for a week as the father reportedly searched the web on how to get rid of of a body. Oh, he wow. allegedly alleg eventually drove that body here to a Sacramento storage unit. Sorry, it's just very disturbing. There's millions of people that would have loved that little girl. That's it's not fact. human. It yep, that's a fact. Now, while Kelly's stepmom is in jail in Nevada facing child abuse charges, her biological mother lives in Oakland and is asking friends on social media to ignore reporters if they call. We have also learned. Whoa, did she really? Let's back that. Look at this. Let me see. L-E-Y-A-N-I-E-J Robinson. So if y'all find her page, then that's how y'all can find her. And I'm glad the news put it out there. It said, if any reporters message you and you're my friends, just ignore them. Why? Anybody have an answer to that? Why? Ignore him for what? Leyani? There is blood on y'all hands as a family. There's blood on your hands. Why do you not want to speak out and say something against this injustice that this biological father and this mother did to a five-year-old baby who cannot speak for herself nor defend herself. We don't want to talk. That's why I hate motherfuckers like that. I hate people like that. You watch some messed up stuff happen. You know it's wrong and you just sit there and be like, I'm not going to say nothing. But let me give Tommy another shout out here real quick and I'm going to tell you why. It's funny how people have so much to say about him, write about him, record about him, dox and pull up information about him. And hopefully he's listening to my message. Shout out to you, Tommy, by the way. But you can't speak up for a five-year-old girl. What the fuck was she supposed to do? Who was she supposed to run to when she needed some help? Do you think a little five-year-old girl knows how to call 911? What is she supposed to do when she's handcuffed and locked up in a cage? 
Imagine if that was your kid, somebody stole your kid and did this to your kid. Would you not want somebody that saw something to speak up and say something? Or would you be okay with the fact that people are just like, well, don't ask me, I don't wanna talk about it. That's lame as a human, as an adult, and especially as a black woman, why would you want to be associated with being an asshole like this? That's why we need more people that are like us over here at the AFC that speak up and speak out against this bullshit. We need more people like this that can stand up and say, that's not us. If you're gonna say not all, why don't you behave that way? If it's not all, you need to behave that way. I live by that example, my goddamn self. I don't want them to think that we're all thugs and all niggas that don't take care of their kids and deadbeats and shit like that. So what do I have to do? It's called lead by example. If you know better, you must do better. If we're gonna use colloquialisms, how about we use them when they should apply and when they should matter, especially in moments like this. But let's move on with the video. I've said my piece. Let's move on with the video. Charges her biological mother lives in Oakland and is asking friends on social media to ignore reporters if they call. We have also learned that the father of that little girl, Tyler Anderson, is expected to go in front of a judge today before being extradited back to Reno. Back to you. Dina Kupfer with the detail. Two more videos. Let y'all watch a little bit of this. And I want y'all to notice that's the biological father and look what he's in. It looks like he's inside of a cage, does it not? Talk about poetic justice. He's in court, but it looks like he's inside of a cage. That is so fitting. Thank you, Millie Mel. I appreciate that. I'm just speaking from my heart right now. I really am. And, and you don't have to excuse yourself for your language, Tara. None of you guys do. I want you guys to speak from your heart, okay? I know if you guys are upset when you watch this story. What's up, Karen? Good to see you back in here, Karen. I see you, Karen G. But I want you guys to speak from your heart. If you're angry, say it. If you need to use cuss words, do so. Express yourself the best way that you can. And we have to be able to get these feelings out because we have to start being able to have these conversations and talk more about this stuff. You guys are doing a great job on the thumbs up. As we get more people, just click that thumbs up. If you're coming in for the very first time, click that thumbs up. We're about to wrap up. I'm gonna let y'all watch a little bit of this. I have never seen a court like this where they have them inside of a cage. Tyler Anderson. Yes, there's a fugitive complaint for you. It is case 18 FD 009747. It's alleged on May 17th of this year. You were a fugitive from uh, justice in violation of the Penal Code Statute 1551. It's alleged on May 17, 2018, you committed the crime of child neglect or endangerment, resulting in substantial bodily or uh, should be injury or mental harm. It's a felony out of the state of Nevada County of Washoe. It's alleged you're a fugitive, and so there's a warrant of request. A warrant of arrest request for you. You are entitled to identification hearing if you so choose, or you can waive that right and agree to be extradited. Would you like me to appoint an attorney to review those rights with you? Let me appoint the public defender, Mr. Parker, to accept the appointment. I will accept the appointment, uh, Bruce Parker, on behalf of my office. I'll wait for the reading and arraignment. I'll stipulate for the five minutes right exactly. And I've got a copy of this. Okay. Um, I did review those rights with Mr. Anderson downstairs. I do have a signed waiver form. Okay. I have been with this plan. All right, thank you. And Mr. Anderson, Mr. Parker did review your rights with you. Yes, sir. And you uh, understand those rights and have agreed to be extradited back to the state of Nevada? Yes, sir. Correct? And yes. you signed this waiver of extradition, is that correct? Yes, sir. And then, Mr. Parker, you witnessed that? Yes. Then let me sign it here in open court. 
and dated today, May 21, 2018. Uh, you will receive a copy of this. They'll obviously come get you. That's why they filed a, a warrant request. I'll set a review date for 30 days from today. I do not expect you to be here. They obviously want you. That's why they filed a warrant. Uh, we'll have to get the governor's uh, warrant and then they'll uh, have them transported. So let me just set a review date just to make sure you're still not in custody, Madam Clerk. June 20th. June 20, 8.30 in this department, 61. Don't expect you to be here. You go back to the van and take care of that. All right? Thank you, Mr. Parker. Sorry about that. This next video coming up is going to be the last video. So for the people that are just coming in, this should give you a little bit of an explanation real quick. So listen up. Here we go. Is so that prosecutors in Reno can get this person back to Reno to face manslaughter charges. 23 year old Tyler Anderson is uh, the one accused in this. He was arrested in Sacramento last week after investigators discovered the remains of his five year old daughter in a duffel bag inside a Sacramento storage unit. Investigators said he drove the body from Reno to Sacramento in an attempt to hide it. His wife, the girl's stepmother, Avriana Anderson, was arrested at their Reno apartment where investigators said they found a metal cage with handcuffs attached to it. Ariana told investigators, Ariana, excuse me, that the girl showed signs of sickness for months and died May 4th and that no one called 911 at the time. That's most of it right there. So for the people that just came in asking what happened, we'll let you hear it again. That's the last video. Is so that prosecutors in Reno can get this person back to Reno to face manslaughter charges. 23 year old Tyler Anderson is uh, the one accused in this. He was arrested in Sacramento last week after investigators discovered the remains of his five year old daughter in a duffel bag inside a Sacramento storage unit. Investigators said he drove the body from Reno to Sacramento in an attempt to hide it. His wife, the girl's stepmother, Avriana Anderson, was arrested at their Reno apartment where investigators said they found a metal cage with handcuffs attached to it. Ariana told investigators, Ariana, excuse me, that the girl showed signs of sickness for months and died May 4th and that no one called 911 at the time. She said the body was placed in a bedroom closet where it remained for nearly a week. She told detectives that Tyler then rented a U-Haul van, drove the body to Sacramento and where it was placed in a friend's storage unit. That friend discovered the remains after he became suspicious of the items dropped off. Anderson is scheduled to be in court today at 1.30 for that extradition hearing. Live here in Sacramento, Brian Hickey, KCRA. So that should give you a little bit more of an idea about what actually happened. 23 year olds Tyler and Avery Ayuna Anderson are locked up and in jail after investigators accuse them of renting a vehicle and driving the dead five year old's body more than 100 miles from their home in Reno, Nevada to a Sacramento storage facility. On Tuesday, officers responded and found the girl's body inside a unit. David Hartman manages the Glen Rose Avenue U Haul facility. It's, it. it's a tragedy that this has occurred. It's, uh cooperating with law enforcement 100%. Detectives believe the five-year-old died within the last two weeks here at the couple's Reno apartment. They say the child had been severely neglected prior to her death. In Sacramento, neighbors say officers have been working out here for three days and are stunned to find out why. We got a storage unit there, so we couldn't even get in there. But I didn't think it'd be a little kid, <laughs> that's for sure. Officers arrested Tyler Anderson, the girl's biological father, the next day in Sacramento. Reno officers arrested Avery Ayuna Anderson, the girl's stepmother, in Nevada. A death investigation. Tyler Anderson making his first court appearance nearly one week after his five year old daughter, Callie, was found inside a Sacramento U Haul storage container. The 23 year old's father speaking briefly outside court. I love him. What about about your granddaughter? I love her. In court documents, inside the duffel bag were the decomposing remains of a small child. The five-year-old's death believed to take place more than two weeks ago. Inside the Reno apartment, the 23-year-old shared... They did starve the child. Who was that that said that? P-35? They did starve that baby. With his wife, Avriana Anderson, the stepmom of Callie, now in Washoe County custody in connection to the girl's death. Police believe the child had been severely neglected prior to her death. 
described being an apartment in disarray with spoiling food, stains and dirty clothing, as well as a wire animal crate in the bathroom with handcuffs attached to it, adding there did not appear to be a pet living in the residence, rather a girl's backpack with girl's clothing next to the crate. So they bought a cage to put her in specifically. If you guys would click that thumbs up, I would love to reach over 300 people tonight. Click that thumbs up. It'll bring a few more people in so we can reach that, okay? Once dead, the couple is accused of placing Callie's body into- Are there pictures of the little girl? Yes, if you have not seen it, I can show you real quick. Let me see, that's video. Let me get her a picture so you can see it. So there were people that wanted to see what little girl are we talking about? Her name is Callie Anderson. She was five years old, and I say was because she is posthumous now. That's the five-year-old little girl that they beat and starved and stuck in a dog cage with handcuffs, starved her, and when her body finally gave out and died, they took her dead body, found a duffel bag, stuffed the body and crunched it inside of a duffel bag, stuffed it inside of a car, drove from Reno to California, a hundred miles and dropped the baby off or her body off in a storage room and left her body to rot. That's what happened. That's the little girl that we're talking about right there the bedroom closet where the five-year-old remained for approximately seven days mm. before taking her body to a friend's U-Haul facility in Sacramento. That friend is the one to notify police leading to the Anderson's arrest. As for what Callie's grandfather thinks what happened. It's an accident. That's all I can think of. 23-year-olds Tyler and Avery Ayuna Anderson are locked up and in jail after investigators accuse them of renting a vehicle and driving the dead five-year-old's body more than 100 miles from their home in Reno, Nevada to a Sacramento storage facility. A death investigation is underway. The person at the center of one of the more disturbing cases involving a child is now awaiting extradition back to Reno. 24 this morning, we have learned a five-year-old discovered dead in a Sacramento storage unit, may have been kept in a dog cage in a Reno apartment before she died. The father and stepmother of that young girl... Hear that again. This morning, we have learned a five-year-old discovered dead in a Sacramento storage unit, may have been kept in a dog cage in a Reno apartment before she died. The father and stepmother of that young girl, well, they're now both facing charges. And CBS 13's Dina Comfort joining us live from the Sacramento County Jail with more details. Dina, good morning. Good morning, Ken and Bethany. Well, the father of that little girl is behind me here at the Sacramento County Jail facing charges related to the five-year-old's death. And again, this all started in Reno and then ultimately led to Sacramento. So what we know now is that the father, Tyler Anderson, has been arrested and booked here. Her stepmom, Adriana Anderson, is in a Reno jail, both facing charges relating to her death. The five-year-old Callie's body was found on Tuesday inside of a U-Haul storage facility in Sacramento. But a Reno TV station obtained an affidavit that says police found an animal crate inside of the couple's Reno apartment bathroom. It had handcuffs attached and food nearby, but no evidence of a pet. The stepmom reportedly told police Callie was unresponsive earlier this month. They tried CPR before putting the girl in cold water and then put her into a duffel bag. The child's body was kept in a closet for a week as the father reportedly searched the web on how to get rid of of a body. He allegedly alleg eventually drove that body here to a Sacramento storage unit. Wow. Sorry, it's just very disturbing. There's millions of people that would have loved that little girl. It's not human. It Now, while Callie's stepmom is in jail in Nevada facing child abuse charges, her biological mother lives in Oakland and is asking friends on social media to ignore reporters if they call. We have also learned that the father of that little girl, Tyler Anderson, is expected to go in front of a judge to. Okay, so, so that name that we called out earlier, you'll have to rewind in the stream. That was the biological mother. 
So we did find her. Let me see if I can find that video again. Hold on. <coughs> Let me see if I can find her name. Talk about ignore reporters. Man, that's so goddamn sad. You can't even say nothing nice about your dead kid. Let me see if I can find it, y'all. Hold on. I'll find it. Hold on. That was the court. Okay, hold on. I'll, I'll find it. Skim through here real quick. Because it was close to the end. Hold on. <coughs> this woman should never be able to rest with a dead child on her hands. Because I want to know, why didn't she have custody of this kid? Let me see if I can find it. It's got to be in here somewhere because it was close to the end. God dang it. Where's that video at? Hold on. I'll, I'll find it. Tyler Anderson clothing next to the crate. Bring her body to a friend's U-Haul facility. 23-year-old U-Haul facility. Apartment. Been working out here for, for three days. Couldn't even get in there. Officers arrested to Sacramento. Reno Hold officer. on, we're going to find a it. Death investigation. We're going to find the biological mom. Hold on. on. The body of a five have been charged. In the past. I said her it's name. Maybe if y'all remember it, post it in the chat if you remember what her name is. That it is possible. The person at the next to that police say fourth in mid. We're looking for the biological mom because they, they showed her face. Question: How a parent can do the un remove the surviving siblings and back whether or not Anderson is mental. This morning we have learned of five. Then ultimately led to it Sacramento. It was after the baby's picture. In, okay. in cold water. Here Hold on, hold on, y'all. I'm gonna try to find Step it. Stepmom is in jail yep. in Nevada. There it is. Now, while Kelly's stepmom is in jail in Nevada facing child abuse charges, her biological mother. Wow, and they now, while said Kelly's it. stepmom is okay. in jail. Okay, there it is. That's the biological mother, Layani. J. Robinson. Can somebody write that in the chat? Leyani J. Robinson. If you can find her Facebook page, post it. Post the link in the chat. Post the link in the chat if y'all can find it. If you can find it quick enough. So we'll take a pause for the cause real quick. And just to let y'all know, that's who the biological mother is. She did not say anything sad about her children based on what we see right here. The first thing she said is if anybody reaches out to try to do an interview, just tell them to ignore them. Like, where is your heart for your daughter at? Listen to this again. Now, while Callie's stepmom is in jail in Nevada facing child abuse charges, her biological mother lives in Oakland and is asking friends on social media to ignore reporters if they call. We have also learned. Ignore reporters if they call. Ain't that some shit? <laughs> in jail in Nevada. Face Leyani, L E Y A N I E J Robinson. If any reporters message you and you're my friends, just ignore them. No, I think that everybody needs to know why Callie Anderson's life was not valued why her biological mother did not care about her, why her biological mother did not love her, why her biological mother did not try to protect her, why her biological mother did not have custody of her, why she decided to sleep with a thug, hashtag when you date thugs, you date death, and she put her children around a thug. Tyler Anderson is a thug. That's what he is. Hood holes, love hood dick, and she got her a damn thug. That's the biological mother, Leyani J. Robinson. And I think that everybody, and we've talked about this before, everybody around this baby failed her. Nobody cared about her and nobody tried to protect her. You found it? Found her on IG? You can feel free to post that link in the chat if you like or post it in the comment section after the video was over, okay? 
This started in Reno, Nevada, and they drove to California. Let me get that pulled up again. It said in California, in Sacramento, California. So they drove to Sacramento, California, which is where they dumped the body at a storage facility, at a U-Haul facility. And the first thing she says is, if any reporters message you or my friends, ignore them. I don't understand the mentality of these adults, of our people. There's the link. That way y'all can go back and look that up for yourself. I'm not encouraging you guys to harass them or anything like that, but at least you need to know this is the biological mother. This is who ultimately failed her, her mom and her dad. Okay, so let me go ahead and wrap this thing up by saying a couple of points before we get out of here. Okay, I want to say a couple things. First and foremost, I've told you guys this story before, and we're going to go ahead and wrap up here in a moment. And while you guys are here, make sure you click that thumbs up before we finish. But I've told you guys one of the most painful and one of the worst things that you can go through is being starved. Whether it's voluntarily or involuntarily, if somebody's either starving you or if you're in a situation where you just don't have money. I've been in situations where I just didn't have a lot of money. <clears throat> and I've told you guys that story, so I don't want to repeat that story, but I got to tell you guys. It's something about being starved and starving a human and a baby on top of that, that burns me up. It puts hate in my heart. It puts a lot of hate in my heart and it causes me not to be able to sleep for the life of me. I will never understand. I'll tell you guys this before I will ever just give somebody asking for money, some money. If they ask me for food and say it, I will give my last dime to make sure whomever asked for some food, I will make sure that they can at least get some sustenance. I will make sure that they can eat. I will make sure that they have an opportunity to eat. Because if you guys have never been hungry in your life, if you've never had those hunger pains, it is a very depressing thing to go through. It's a very hurtful thing to go through. And I want you guys to understand that this baby suffered to the very end of her short little life. Her mother did not care about her. Her biological mother did not care about her. Her stepmother did not care about her. Her own biological father did not care about her. Everybody around her only used her for the benefits that they could collect from that child. Hashtag babies for benefits. And that shit has got to be punished to the fullest extent of the law. We need to take a page out of Texas laws where we have a super aggravated law. It's called super S U P E R super aggravated. There should be a law that is much more stronger than normal laws when you have children that cannot speak for themselves and they cannot defend themselves against the tyranny of their caretakers. And I think more states, instead of trying to enforce child support, like, like they feel like that's going to fix something. This is proving that we are getting worse. We're in 2020 and we're doing worse and worse shit every single day as a society to these innocent babies. The focus needs to be put on holding people accountable. Until you start to hold people accountable, there can be no change. If you continue to keep incentivizing bad things, then bad things are going to continue to happen. I want everybody to mark my words. And matter of fact, this is probably the perfect time to play this particular video. I'm gonna, let you guys listen to a short clip real quick. I don't know if I'm gonna get in trouble for this or not, but I'm gonna play it anyway. There is a man on ESPN. His name is Kevin Arnovitz. And he said something that I don't even think he realizes what he actually said and how applicable it is. What I'm gonna do is I'm going to play this video and I'm gonna let you guys hear what he said real quick and i want you guys to tell me if y'all catch this it's only like a two second video so hopefully i don't get flagged for this i caught this on espn and it blew my freaking mind that this man said this because 
it is so key. It is so pertinent. And what he said was so beautiful and so amazing and so important that everybody skipped this. I want y'all to hear this. He said that if you don't want bad behaviors, then do not incentivize it. I don't remember which show it's on, but y'all can see the screenshot here. I'm gonna play it just for a hot second and hopefully I don't get flagged. Listen up. Yeah, I mean, if you don't like certain behaviors, don't incentivize that behavior. And yeah, I mean, if you don't like certain behaviors, don't incentivize that behavior. And I'm gonna let that play again. Yeah, I mean, if you don't like certain behaviors, don't incentivize that behavior. And if you don't like certain behaviors, don't incentivize those certain behaviors. It was a two second clip. Go in your own time, go find that clip on ESPN. It is two seconds long in that whole thing. And I thought about that, I said, damn, that's so deep. Because if you look at most of the, cause he was talking about the NBA, but you can apply that to how we deal with our children. Can you not hashtag babies for benefits? The way that we deal with our children and the way that we deal with our children in our society nowadays is indicative of the benefits that we can collect from them. So if you don't want bad behaviors, leftists and Democrat, don't incentivize it. If you want people to go out and go get a job and go earn their keep, and stop living off the government system that is continuing to drain and drain and drain every single day, which Donald Trump is actually trying to fix, then you don't incentivize lazy ass people. Mm-hmm. It was on the jump. Thank you, Marik. Perfect. I thought it was an amazing thing and I've been waiting to use that clip. I said, this would be the perfect time. It was only two seconds long. If I get flagged, it gets flagged, but I thought it was important enough to bring that up. Last but not least, if you see something, please say something. The only reason that those two jackasses were caught in time within a week was because somebody became suspicious. They saw something and they said something. They got on the phone, they called the police, and they said, you guys need to come check this out. Something about this is not right. Police came down there and they were able to make the matchup and connect the dots and arrest those two assholes. That's the only way that it happened. And I thank God for people like that who are responsible Americans. Don't be afraid of all this no so-called no snitch culture. Don't be afraid of that shit. You see something, you tell it. We have to be on the front lines. Shit, protect yourself. Go get you a weapon. Most states are starting to be a hell of a lot more liberal when it comes to their gun laws. Like Oklahoma, anybody and everybody can carry a gun. And I'm gonna tell you something. I kind of like that better than places like Chicago where they say that law-abiding citizens cannot have guns. Strictest guns laws in the law in, 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 uh, in the United States, in Chicago. Strictest gun laws. Texas. Everybody can have a gun. Everybody's locked and loaded. So you can't just run up on anybody and everybody. And I love it. I love it. I love knowing that I can carry my peace so that I will have peace. Go get you some gun training. Do not be afraid of guns. Like Relationship Rehab says on United Guns of America channel, guns are tools. Don't look at them as being so scary. It's just like any other tool in your house. It's a tool. Use it responsibly, be careful with it, and be proficient with it. Go get your training, go get your license, pass your test, go to the gun range, get you a membership, and go shoot like me and my dad do. Shout out to my dad, my biological father. Shout out to my daddy. We go shoot. I love shoot with my old man. And I don't miss, some of y'all have seen my post on Instagram. I'll post my targets in there from time to time. <laughs> Jason Gunn knows, shout out to my brother, Jason Gunn. He told me he could tell by the way that I was holding that I was pulling to the left cause I was on target, but all my shots were to the left. I went to the gun range like the next week, everything was dead center, center mass on target. I don't miss 
even from distance. I hit from up close, I push that target back, and I hit from distance. Once I pull it, I ain't gonna miss. And everybody, if you're going to pull it, you better make damn sure that your life depends on pulling that tool. If you pull that tool, you better be damn well ready to use it and be proficient because you are held accountable for every single shell that leaves that gun. We must protect ourselves against the tyranny of those who do not follow the law. Stand up for yourself, stand up for your children, and the more that we can continue to keep making strides in that direction, then I think that we can get better as a whole. That's truly what I wanna say. That's why I love you guys. Everybody who shouts AFC, 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 everybody who has a badge, everybody who is on Patreon, everybody who sends a dollar or $10, $100 or whatever it is that you send, everybody who has ordered a shirt, everybody who asks for music or emails me, or even those who send stories. I know it gets difficult when y'all send me stories that are just like, damn, Jay ain't doing my stories. Jay is looking and Jay really truly appreciates everybody. All of our child advocate pages, let me shout them out again. Momsboyfriend.com, illicitdeeds.com, Our Lives Matter on Facebook, Tommy Sotomayor at afatherlessamerica.com. Brian, the Relationship Rehab and United Guns of America. Extreme Murder and Headlines on Facebook. United We Stand Against Child Abuse on Facebook. Make This Go Viral on Facebook. Justice for All Cases People Are Not Talking About. All Child Advocate pages from my heart to yours. This is your boy, DJ Just J. We're the AFC where we advocate for children first. I want to wish an RIP to Callie Anderson, baby girl. I want you to know that you should have been loved and there are people out here in this world that would have done right by you. And I want to wish you our sincere condolences, young princess. Let's back that up. I don't want the parents in this. I don't want them in this at all. But there were people out there that would have done right by you. can't get it to move, but it's okay. But our sincere condolences to the little five-year-old girl, Callie Anderson. She deserved better. And as a society, we can do better. And I continue to encourage you guys to do better. From my heart to yours, you guys have a great night. Thank you guys so much for listening to our stream. Stay encouraged. Stay supporting. Continue to keep doing what you guys are doing, man. I love you guys. And y'all have an excellent Saturday night. And we'll be back here on Sunday to bring you guys another story and talk about some things. I feel like it's important. Y'all have a good night. Peace. For the people that are still here, what we're gonna do is we're going to read off the support that came in. And what that means is for anybody who donated to our stream, we're going to read all of those off real quick. I'm gonna run a commercial. We're gonna play a little music. Like I said, to get everybody back in a good uh, cheerful mood because the Super Bowl is tomorrow. But I really want you guys to have a good night, man. Thank you guys for staying up so late, man. We were damn near in third shift. So that's what we're going to do. We're going to read donations, give a couple of shout outs. Um, we're going to check and see how many thumbs up we had. I don't know, remember how many thumbs up we had, but so if somebody can post that in the chat, let me know. For anybody that wants to donate, like uh, Moms Fur Babies and Karen and um, MMO Family Girl, all of the rest of these people. Yeah, Karen Grayley, I'm sorry. You did just donate again. Thank you so much for that. For everybody to hit us up in Super Chat, I'm going to read those because I found a place where I can read it at. But I'm going to shout everybody out that donated. If you have never donated to a platform before like this, then what that does is to make sure that we can continue to do what we do, have the time, have the resources, pay for little things that we need to pay for, uh, pay for every month to make sure that we can keep this thing rocking and continue to advocate for these babies that need our voices. They need our voices and they need all of our voices. And thank you guys so much for your support. The links are in the description box. So please make sure that you guys uh, click those, Cash App, PayPal, Venmo. I get 100% of that. If you send it through Super Chat, I'm gonna get 70%, which is okay. That means Google takes 30%. They be over here pimping us over here. So 